of all, starting off with this whole issue of holding the game there, because, you know, as we've seen, fans have had to travel thousands of miles to get there at extortionate costs. It's taken them hours. And there's this issue of Henrik Mkhitaryan not even being able to get there because of the political situation. Do you think it should have been moved? Uh, morning, Charlotte. Morning, Richard. Well, it's a very good question, and uh, there has been a lot of conjecture over it. UEFA's uh, almost message has been to get the game as widely across Europe as they can. And this is the reason why, Charlotte, it's the Olympic Stadium. I just turned around, you can see it there. Uh, 68,000 seat. It costs £500 million to build. And uh, there are going to be only 5,000 English fans in there because of all the things that you've just described. And uh, I think there is a good case for saying that it should have been moved closer to England. But at the same time, this game should be brought to territories right across the world. They want as many fans to be able to see big matches just like this one. And that's why they are sticking to their guns and insisting that it should be held at a wonderful arena just like this. OK, so what's the atmosphere like there now? Well, it's actually a, a very good atmosphere, one of excitement. Uh, there are still English fans uh, around the city. Uh, we went to, had a, a meeting with the tourist board yesterday. They were very optimistic uh, about today's event and the atmosphere surrounding it. They say they've hosted big events before. Uh, over the last five or six years, they've hosted many big events in Baku here in Azerbaijan uh, on the east coast of the country. And they say they are perfectly capable of being able able to do this event justice. Lots of people believing it could have been held in Madrid or, or Wembley or whatever else. But this is an, a, a country and a venue that has hosted big matches before. It's been able to cope with the influx of people. The Haider Aliyev's uh, airport that lots of people have criticised, I can pass through there uh, on my way in, it's perfectly capable of hosting a, a large number of fans. Uh, but it has been criticised and they're not very happy about it here at all. Darren, how long did it take you to get there then? We know it's a 6,000-mile round trip from the UK. <laughs> We've been speaking to superfans. We had a couple yesterday, actually, who'd spent a week planes, trains and automobiles yeah. making their way there. How tricky a journey was it? Oh, well, it took me... 15 hours door to door to get here and that's with me taking just two flights so I can understand the problems that they're having. Baku is bordered by a number of countries and there are a number of routes that people have been taking to get in there not least by train uh, f through Georgia on the way here but even the simplest of routes uh, Charlotte has taken around about 15 to 16 hours to get here. Lots of tales from even my colleagues of long haul trips that have left them blaring eyed and weary but the excitement perks up once you get here yeah. because this is a fantastic arena and it should be a fantastic match tonight you'll have seen across your back pages uh, that the Chelsea manager blew a bit of a gasket yesterday he was unhappy at the many media watching his training session there was a little bit of a uh, coming together of two of his players as well and one of his best players was injured so problems for him but Arsenal they've got the opportunity to win uh, a first uh, Europa League trophy well a first European trophy for nearly 30 years Years, and a fourth for their manager, Unai Emery. That's probably why uh, Piers isn't with you guys now. But imagine he's a little bit nervous, <laughs> know, uh, but it's going to be a big match for everyone of an Arsenal persuasion. Have uh, you got a prediction for us then about how it's going to go? <laughs> I knew you'd ask me that. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, my heart says Arsenal because they've got two wonderful strikers up front, but my head says Chelsea. They are uh, just such a, a, a bizarre club, so many problems surrounding them, but they just have this habit of winning silverware. It would be their second in six years if they were to win it. I, I would say it's relatively good-natured. There, there aren't any difficulties. I've been to many European cities uh, ahead of matches, and it has been a little bit fractious. Not so here. Very friendly of what we've seen so far of the English contingent. Well, I must say, I mean, if, if it's your team that loses tonight, having gone all of that way, it's going to be an incredibly dispiriting journey home again, isn't it? 
It is indeed 2,800 miles in total. But, uh, you know, if you are the team that wins, you will enjoy every single one of Absolutely. those miles and uh, the trip will have been worth it. Lots of money being spent. Uh, but as I say, you know, you can see why when you look at the stadium behind me, why so many people are so keen to get here. Yeah, yeah well, you say there, Darren, about the multi-million pound stadium behind you. We're a bit intrigued by that dog kennel because it seems that maybe they've got state-of-the-art facilities for their guard dogs <laughs> as well. They're looking after them quite well, are they? Uh, absolutely. Every single... Listen, the, the, the facilities here are wonderful, as you can see. They're all sort of lazily enjoying the sun. It's very, very hot here, I can tell you. And I think as far as the facilities are concerned, they're very, very impressive indeed. All right. Well, listen, enjoy your day. Thank you for being with us uh, so early in the morning. And uh, here's to a great, a great match tonight. Thanks, thanks for being here. Thanks, Darren. Good stuff. Thanks, right. Richard. Thanks, Charlotte.